What's up guys? In today's video, I kind of want to go over some old drawings or older drawings that I've done. Just kind of jump through a sketchbook and show you guys a bunch of different pieces and explain a little bit about how I did them, the process, and what I was thinking doing during the artwork itself. Not all the drawings are going to be perfect, and that's okay. I'll kind of explain my thoughts on what I did right or wrong and some of the, each pieces. Yeah, so to start with, what I'm going to show you over here is these shelves that have bunches of papers and binders on them. These are all full of sketches and drawings and full renderings that I've done over the years. They're not in any particular order. It looks a little bit messy right now because I've been going through and looking for stuff, so it's a little bit messy. So many drawings. But what we're looking for is up here. Up here is where I keep binders that are full of finished pieces. So I'm going to grab one and check out what's inside. Now I'm not totally sure what all is going to be in the binder that I pulled down, so it'll be just a bunch of random stuff, which I think will make this a lot more fun. This one conveniently says Final Renders on it. Keen observers will know I'm watching a Lisa McCree live video in the background. Please go check her out, subscribe. I'm going to do a nice little lavalier mic thing here so that you guys can hear the words that I'm saying as amazingly as possible. Alright, so this first one is a custom Mustang rendering I did a long time ago, but I still like to share it every now and then. It's this really cool two-tone look, kind of low, slung out, did a custom wheel to match. Something like this to me still holds up pretty well, so I'm glad to have something like this still around. This is marker and airbrush on Canson Pro Layout Marker Paper. This next one is a Porsche concept that I sketched up. A lot of times when I do these uh, real concept-y looking pieces, I like to leave it as Bic Pen with gray tone. This way, I can kind of just focus on the design and not get real weird with colors. Colors can sometimes be really distracting, so when I'm doing something like this, it's nice to kind of leave it monochromatic. This next one's really cool. This is definitely a bigger drawing. It has a lot more detail. When you work a little bit bigger, it's a whole lot easier to get detail in. This is kind of hot rod look with the flames. Everything is done by hand with markers and airbrush paints. And I did a one-off wheel design to go with it. Something like this is really cool to kind of fill out the composition entirely. Just kind of get a really nice illustrative look out of it. But this one was a lot of fun. This is a really cool Corvette piece I did earlier this year, actually, even though it doesn't have a date on it. And like everything, actually this entire folder is airbrush, marker, a little bit of colored pencil, and usually acrylic paint or gouache for details. This one was a little bit experimental, even though this was really intended to be more of a quick piece. It's got a few different design elements in it that are either earlier or late model, and you know, of course the cove detail. This one was done probably within a few days of that last Corvette because they're similar style. I can usually tell with the marker stuff if I've done something within a few days of each other just, just from the way the style of the detail is done. On this particular truck, I wanted to kind of show a two-tone idea, but it's split up in a unique way. I've got trim here, orange, black, pretty basic, but I went a little bit heavy on the grill detail because I wanted something that was a little bit more throwback C10-like but still kind of fit a nice billet street rod look. So it has a nice bit of classic to it and a little bit of hot rod too. When I was doing this one, I just kind of wanted to do a hot rod. I think it was at night and I ended up using it as content and I just kind of used it as an excuse to use colors that I would never get asked to do. So two tone silver, green, and a really nice kind of red orange to split them up and what I did was I use the same interior color as the pinstripe color and then of course use that on the louvers as well and then pick that up in the wheel so it all kind of ties itself together. Also drew in kind of a removable hard top look. I wouldn't normally do hot rods with fenders but I just kind of wanted to try something a little bit different. Obviously got a smaller drawing on top of a bigger drawing here. A lot of times when I travel, I always take pens and paper with me. And this was when I was out at a friend's house in the morning. I woke up and I just kind of wanted to sketch something real quick. I do a lot of warm-up sketches. It's really how I like to start my day, even if I'm out doing something else. 
This Mustang I did as part of a demo piece. I can't remember if this was a Facebook Live or something else, but I draw a lot, a lot of Mustangs and a lot, a lot of C10. So these I can basically do from memory and go with kind of a simple color, black. And something like this, you gotta be a little bit careful to make sure that you're getting a little bit of cool tone on top and a little bit of warm tone on bottom. And you can even see I did a little bit of red on the bottom underneath the car. And the reason for that a lot of times is just kind of add some color dynamics to the artwork. If it's too monochromatic and too clean, it can also come across as a little bit boring. This was a Pro Touring Camaro that I did while I was testing out a bunch of markers and paints together. And I don't even know if I actually paint, uh, posted this one, but I love the classic shape of, with these I consider kind of a fastback Camaro. And just kind of made a Pro Touring look out of it and Yellow calipers, just because I think yellow calipers are cool. This is part of an entire interior concept. So when I'm working on something like this, sometimes I'll work in sections. So I don't necessarily want the seat to distract from the entire dash and the door panel concept. Sometimes that stuff can work together, but I like to split it up a little bit so that whoever's working on these pieces can just focus on the information here and whoever's working on the seat can focus on the information there. Even if it's the same person, sometimes splitting it up just makes the task feel a little bit simpler. There are cases in artwork where it's nice to put these together and, um, and I could probably combine them digitally, but I just think it's a better way to approach something like this. This was for a 67, 68 Camaro. I draw a lot of Cadillacs. I draw a lot of C10s, but I draw a lot of Cadillacs. I used to draw them a lot more than I did. Um, this one was actually for a birthday kind of present thing. A lot of times if I've got friends on Facebook or something and it's their birthday, I'll do a quick drawing, post it on the timeline, and just say happy birthday. I can't remember off the top of my head who this is for, but I felt like it was cool to do like a, a Winfield fade on it. Some white walls and spoked wheels. But, I mean, who doesn't like Cadillacs? So this was definitely a warm-up piece for sure. I could tell because I didn't spend a lot of time on the initial drawing. And the reason why it's obvious to me is the front grille, the opening, everything, the details are a little bit big. A lot of times when I'm doing stuff like this first thing in the morning, I may not spend as much time as I should on it, but no. Again, warm-up pieces, you, you kind of want to get through them. If this was for a customer, I would slow down a bit, take some time to get the details right. The rendering overall is good, but yeah, I would definitely spend a little bit more time there if, uh, if I had to uh, for a customer. So many drawings. And some of you guys might know, I love classic Ferraris. I mean, I love Ferraris in general, but the classics are my favorite. This is a 288 GTO, and Normally when I'm working on something I really enjoy, I'll slow down a lot more and take a lot more time with the details, which is cool. I had a lot of fun working on this one. Stuff like this usually isn't real popular on social media, but that's not always the most important thing. This uh, Porsche 356 is done on vellum paper. I can usually tell just by the look of the paper what kind of paper it is. In this particular example, you can see that you can flip it on both sides, because that's what vellum does. You can actually work both sides of vellum. So vellum is really great for quick stuff. I don't usually like to use it for final renders because it can be a little bit messy and it doesn't really age that well. The paper just isn't great long term. You could probably see in the light has got a little bit of war purple to it and that's just kind of nature of the beast. But for a quickie, this one's pretty cool. I love classic portions. Last year when I was having my car wrapped, I had this idea for how I would uh, have part of the rear wrapped to change the taillight panel shape a little bit. The taillights on the 996 turbos and C4Ss are huge, and there's this reflector strip that goes across the back. It's considered iconic for the body style, but I thought, man, if we're gonna wrap it, let's slim these areas down. And this is a little bit more rem reminiscent of a 997.2. Um, and we ended up doing this in the wrap, and I think it looked really, really good. Now, this is just a quickie on vellum, so it's not perfect, but I just wanted to show the concept to the guy wrapping the car. I mean, they did a beautiful job. All these binders have a Merc in here somewhere. This one is more or less inspired by the Merc built by Max Fish at BioCustoms of Jerry Horton's, uh, Jerry Horton's Merc. 
I did change a few things because it is a quick drawing and it was a warm up piece at the time. What I did specifically different on this one as far as technique was all the artwork is done with marker. So you might be able to tell it's a little bit grainier than if I just airbrushed. Airbrush is super, super clean. Marker, depending on how much you build it, can get a little bit messy. But I always like to see what I can do better, what I can learn by trying things over and over again. This is another great example of just trying to use markers and no airbrush. This is a smaller drawing. The reason this one's smaller is in some ways it's, these smaller ones go a little bit faster, but the reality is marker tips are very limited in size. If you were to try to fill a huge area with marker, you would want a bigger marker and they're not always available. So in this particular, this was a demo for a set of artwork I was getting ready to do and proposing uh, the style. This would mean working a little bit smaller in order to accommodate the marker type. I ended up going a different way, which I'm glad, so that I could use a lot more airbrush. That's actually where I'm gonna end today's video. The original cut of this was so, so much longer. The first version was like 20 minutes and then I still had so many drawings to go. So there's a lot more drawings I'd love to share with you guys just from this sketchbook. So if you'd like to see more, let me know in the comments down below because I'd love to put together part two and part three. Apparently I have a lot more drawings than I thought I did. And if you could, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.